the NFC South. And for this one, I will go ahead and kick us off for here. We're going to start it from the bottom and work our way up to the top with each one. NFC South last year, a very competitive division in the wrong ways. Like it was not really who is going to rise to the top. It's going to, who's going to avoid the pitfall, who's going to avoid the pitfall the longest, which led to last year being the Buccaneers who, Weirdly enough, they actually won the division at a playoff game over the faltering Eagles who were plummeting. So you know what? Maybe we gave them a little rough break during the regular season, but postseason time they made a little noise and gave the Panther and gave the Lions a good run. But for the for the NFC South for this year, I'm going to start at the bottom. I am going to go with the New Orleans Saints at the bottom at six and eleven. The, weirdly enough, this team so good on paper statistically was awesome last year. So many categories they were top top ten especially some of the advanced metrics like EPA, some things like that. Like they looked really good, but they found ways to not win games. It was very, very uncanny how they just, instead of find a way to win, they found a way to not win. I like Derek Carr. I think he's a better quarterback than we've seen the last couple of years, but there's something missing. I guess if that makes sense. I don't know how to describe it. I know with NBA players, sometimes we talk about it like they're really good, but they're missing that little extra something to make those extra plays. Chris Olave is awesome. I think he's going to have an outstanding season again. I think he's going to build off of it. Alvin Kamara is getting old. The running back, Kendra Miller, can't stay healthy. Jamal Williams, I don't know if they just hate him there or what's going on. I mean, he didn't get a touchdown until Jameis Winston called for it last year in week 17, 18, when they were up 42 to 17 and ran it up on the Falcons. So the Saints, and they're going to be like negative $80 million in cap next year. So they, they've been kicking the can down the road for a decade. Event. Eventually it's going to come to haunt them. I don't. I just don't know what to think of them. So, and defensively, they're getting older, too. I feel like they're just – they're stuck. I feel like it's going to have to get worse before it gets better, but they've done so much to stay where they're at with, between kicking the can down, bringing in Derek Carr, all the moves they made. So I think right now is where it's going to start to hurt. New Orleans Saints at 6-11. and 11. Competitive. Chris Olave, if you're playing fantasy, I had him as the receiver number 10 in fantasy. Go watch that video if you haven't yet, too. Go watch that live stream where we rank positions. I go more into that. Alvin Kamara, a good running back two this year. Maybe not running back one that you normally take, but a good running back two. Very easy strength of schedule. But as far as predictions, it's I'm not feeling the Saints right now. I, it feels like a six and eleven type of season. Competitive of those eleven game losses, it probably four or five will be one possessions. But I just I can't see it. I I maybe I'm unfair, but this division wasn't very good last year, and I think they got the least better. So I'm gonna have them at six and eleven and two and four in the division. Yeah, I mean. I think that's a fair pick. Um, I think the record is is telling for how they're they're doing. Uh, you know, we'll talk about mine here in, in a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think I think for this situation, I think you're exactly right. They're old. Um, can, can they get better? I don't know if they can get better with their current team with the current starters, supposed quote unquote. For those listening in audio only, um, they got a guy in, at quarterback there out of South Carolina and out of Oklahoma. Uh, that could potentially make some starts here and make some noise in that quarterback room. Because uh, David, uh, or sorry, yeah, David Carr is... Derek Carr, you were right. Yeah, thank you. I was right. I, 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 I've been thinking David Carr and all those sacks right now. Um, speaking of the South, by the way. Uh, but yeah, no, um, Derek Carr, I just think he's one of those guys where after the leg break, it was different. Uh, he was on MVP pace, and then all of a sudden, breaks the leg. We don't get the same Derek Carr. And... There were flashes. There's always been flashes. But in that type of uh, offense with the Saints, there can't be just flashes. You have to be on your your game 100% of the time. And I don't know if Derek Carr's still at that level anymore. I hope he proves me wrong. I 100% support the idea of proving me wrong. But most importantly, can somebody give the ball to Jamal Williams other than Jameis Winston? Please, all I ask, just give the ball to Jamal Williams and actually block for him. Just just actually open a hole for longer than 0. 0.00001 seconds. That's all that's all I need. Like just give him a hole inside the 10 and just see what happens. This dude should be getting 10 touchdowns a, a year in this offense because he doesn't have to run between the 20s. That unless it's a short yardage situation. That is Alvin Kamara's game. Alvin Kamara is not a red zone back. His entire career he's not been a red zone back. So yeah, I like this pick for for the Saints at 6 and 11, I will say. I will I'll also add on to before I'm not so it's not like I'm completely pouring on the Saints fans here. I do think there is a path, but it's going to require the offensive line to have a significant upgrade. I do love Talisi Fuaga, the draft pick. I think that's an awesome fit. He's going to maul some people. He's going to get Jamal Williams in the end zone if they run behind him in the red zone. 
but I need the whole conglomerate unit to pass protect better. I think yeah. since the late break, that has been the biggest thing with cars extending the plays or if the first speed read isn't quite there as he goes through his reads, being able to come back. I think yeah. he gets the timer starts to go off. He kind of gets a little panicky. So he needs an offensive line that can hold it a little bit more. So there yeah, is a never- path. But I just don't. Well, it's a very, re- there's a lot of resistance. And let's not forget. They lost one of the best tackles in the game. Very recently. They have yeah, yet too. to, yet to replace Taron Armstead. Exactly. So, and like, the Trevor Penning project has not worked out so far. Fair. Yeah. So yeah, they'll, they'll figure it out, but oh, I do like the pick as far as record wise. I do think that makes a lot of sense. The good news is they're in the NFC South. So if they are, if they are two and a half games better than what I, what I'm saying, they might win the division. That's how very yeah. interesting this division currently is. But Speaking of the division, we're going to go next to the next team I have on the list. I don't even know if I feel comfortable with this one because they are. This is when they're at their best. But I have Tampa Bay also at six and eleven, getting the tiebreaker because of a three and three division record. They were the division champs the last two years, three years in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Two years for sure. Yeah, two years because the Saints won it the year before. Baker Mayfield played awesome last year, especially in those key moments. Mike Evans is still Mister One Thousand. That he's if Pitbull's Mister Three Hundred Five, Mister Worldwide. Mike Evans is Mr. 1K. Like it's a death tax is Mike Evans a thousand yards. Chris Godwin's still really good. Rashid White's good. Defensively, we talked about the Saints getting old. Well, the Buccaneers had that tenfold. Levante David's still awesome, but he is getting up there. They did lose Carlton Davis in the secondary. Antoine Winfield is awesome, a top five safety and getting paid like it. They have pieces. They don't have the Shaquille Barrett and Jason Pierre Paul and Adamakin Sue Rudd that they had a few years ago when they were at their best. They are still trying to replace that. Vita Vea is still terrifying. Their run defense is still top five because of him. I just, there was a lot of very, I think they were kind of the beneficiaries of the NFC South last year. Like they were the best of the bad bunch that actually parlayed into beating a very, very, very badly floundering Eagles team that I've never seen a very good team that could pitfall like that, that I can think of. And they, they were able to take it to him, but, I do think with that first place schedule and a few harder games here, and I think Tampa Bay stayed about the same. They didn't get worse by any means. I think they stayed about the same. If we were going up sideways down, they stayed about the same is what I'd go with Tampa Bay. Maybe a slight improvement here or there. But I, I, I'm going to have Tampa at the number three, six and 11, kind of in the same boat of they're going to be in a lot of close games. I don't think this is going to be a Baker Mayfield free fall. I think he's going to play just fine. I just think they're going to lose some of these close action games that they had that they'd win last year, for example, and a, a much harder schedule. Last year, they clearly overachieved. If we look at our predictions and most other people's, we had them at, what, four wins? We had them in content. We had them in the Caleb Williams, Drake May sweepstakes, and they ran through all of that. So I do think there was a reason for that, and it's not just us on, not doubling down there. So I'm going to say that they do find a way to be competitive, but unfortunately, the rest of the division got pretty decent, and it's just a tough schedule, too. So I'm going to have Tampa Bay at 6-11, and 11, but a a competitive six and eleven. I don't want this to sound like I'm completely trashing on them. I, this is not a Tampa Bay it's hate account. I just, fortunately, that's kind of the nature of the NFC South too. You're up and you're down a little bit. Tom Brady kind of threw a wrench in that. Same with even when Drew Brees was there, the Saints were up and down. Drew Brees is a Hall of Fame quarterback. It's the nature of the tide. So we're gonna go Tampa Bay at six and eleven. Yeah, I, I'm again. I don't hate it. Uh, I would like to formally apologize to my pick I, I made last year and what I said about Baker Mayfield being replaced by Kyle Trask. My apologies, Baker. <laughs> Actually, I think at one point in time, I even said, I don't even know who's going to play quarterback uh, because I completely forgot about the Baker Mayfield situation. So my bad, Baker. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan that Baker should still be the quarterback in Cleveland. Um, but you know what? I'm glad you found, found a home in Tampa and I'm glad you have a receiver that likes you out there. Uh, that will actually catch the ball in Mike Evans, who, as you said, walking 1,000s right there. Uh, you know, they had Bernie Mac as uh, the Mr. 3000 uh, movie. Well, yeah, if they're going to remake that for football, it's Mr. 1000 and it's Mike Evans. An insert player to play Mike Evans here. Because uh, this dude just walks, talks, 1,000 yards, seven Punch touchdowns. Sean Lattimore in the head, you know, daily, <laughs> yearly. <laughs> yeah. Anything he wants to do, he can do it as long as it's catching the ball and getting into the end zone. And After a thousand yards, maybe not so much, but up to a thousand yards, absolutely. Just yeah, count it. Um, so- yeah, I, I do think the Carlton Davis loss is going to be huge for this team. Uh, they already struggled in the secondary, so now you're going to be trying to fill that hole. Um, obviously, they paid Jamel Dean, but what does that mean? And mind you. 
coming from an Auburn guy, love me some Jamel Dean. But you did lose Carlton Davis, who pretty much had every receiver in the NFC South on wraps. Like, think about that for a second. As bad as that defense was, when he was healthy and on the field, no receiver in the NFC South really succeeded against him. You have to go back to DJ Moore in one game uh, three years ago. And that's still not saying a whole lot there. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a situation where you got to be concerned for that secondary, really. Also, you lose some pieces in that linebacking core. You're still darn good. So, they figure it out. You'll you'll be okay. Um, welcome back to the rest of the world. Again, talk about an armor guy stepping in there. Kenny Britt. All right. Yeah, you guys will be fine. Um, but, yeah, like, sorry you don't have three all-world fast-as-hell linebackers anymore. Now you actually have to live your life with slow linebackers. I'm sorry. So. Levante David's still not even slow. He's just not yeah. Three <laughs> speeds. <laughs> yeah, my bad. You have to have a four-three running linebacker instead of a four-two running linebacker. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, but it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Uh, and then that's, I mean, yeah, that defensive line needs to figure itself out. I think the big loss as well that we don't really talk about enough is the loss of their center. You lose a center, as we're going to talk about with the Eagles when we do the NFC East. You lose a center. You lose a vital piece of that offense, especially that level of center that was there in Tampa. Yes, it was replaced last year as good as you could. Doesn't change the fact that you lost your center. Now this year, you're going to be trying to replace that still. You got to figure it out uh, because Baker needs a guy to help him out with some of these protection calls. And that's what your center really does. And on top of that, you got to have a good run game. Baker thrives off of play action. And in the relatively mediocre run game they had last year, Baker was, was yeah. Uh, Baker was still able to succeed. Mike Evans still got his thousand yards, so it's it's worth mentioning like here and now. Figure out your offensive line, and obviously, I I could probably go in deeper into this, but I'm gonna save a little bit for when I make my picks. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. Whatever they get, they paid Tristan worse, which is most important. Glad to see him get paid well deserved. I think they did a good job rallying and keeping a lot of their own guys, and I think that was a great thing to do. The only problem is i think that some of the other teams got better too and their schedule's a little tougher while they overachieved last year so they did the right thing unfortunately i think it's going to yield the less right results unfortunately could be wrong though like we said with the saints i am two games off and they are winning the division for the third year in a row that's how Yikes. maybe just one tie off and you'll be you, you know you'll be wrong there is a tie in my predictions at some point not today but there is a tie at some point during when we do this just be aware not today i though. accidentally hit the tie button when i was doing it i was like oh how terrible is this and i just kept moving Oh, there will be ties. I don't know. You'll see when, where, why, and how, but not yet. Yeah. But that's going to – I won't spend too much more time on Tampa. I think they'll be competitive, but unfortunately it's a day late and a dollar short in a few games. We're just going to take you to number two, which is the surprise of our predictions already. I got the Carolina Panthers at 7 and 10. So I have a five-game improvement, which – five-game improvement, still 3-3 three and three in the division. Obviously, last year it was awful. Like, it was – can we say anything good about it really besides they survived the Texans once? Like it was a Bryce Young looked kind of like they pulled a high school kid and threw him into an NFL game. Unfortunately, the receivers, as far as getting separation was Holy cow. Adam Thielen found an open spot in his own. If they played man, those receivers were useless because Adam Thielen is great of a career as he's had. He's 50 and he was never running away from anyone. Anyway. So it was a few weeks there where Adam Thielen was able to bail them out, get into some zones, but they still couldn't get wins. Running game was uh, offensive line. Ugh. They clearly missed DJ Moore. They clearly didn't have the picks to build on that team, so they traded them all away to get Bryce Young. Defensively, is Brian Burns, Mr. Spider-Man, save us, or we're screwed. <laughs> this year, defensively, they are going to be under. They're going to be worse than the 22nd ranked defense. That like their ceiling is 22nd right now. There is a lot of holes in that defense. I do not like it at all. But except offensively, for the, except for the defensive line. I like Derek Brown. That's true. I, I I like Derek Brown from what he did. Sorry, the interior of the defensive line. <laughs> I like one member of the defensive line. That's the rest of them. I think there's still plenty to see from. I love what they did offensively, though, with what they had to work with. David Canales is the new head coach, the former offensive coordinator of Tampa Bay. We've seen what he's done there working with Brady, Baker, et cetera. I think he's going to help with Bryce Young in that development. They put $100 million into the guard position, which I love that because you've seen teams when their guard play is good. There, things are a lot easier, especially for Bryce Young, who's a smaller quarterback. He's got to step up into the pocket. He's got to be able to see. He can't have he can't have Vita Vea sitting in his lap in 1.3 seconds. They spent a lot of money at that guard position. They've invested a lot in the receiver position, too. We, Deontay Johnson, 
as much as slack as he gets from going like 20 games without a touchdown, I blame Kenny Pickett for a lot of that. He was open a lot. He got the he gets open slants, outs. He's a very smooth, quick, athletic route runner who's gonna get in the end zone. I like Xavier Leggett. I I know some people don't. I think he's a really good big body to exercise a roost fast. He's not gonna run you the route tree, but he can do similar DK Metcalf S things. Not as good as DK. DK is a separate freak, but I think he could play a similar role of be a giant athletic monster and go. If someone's one on one with you, is five foot nine, dunk on him. Or if we throw you a screen, run through people and be terrifying. Either way, it's better than what Bryce Young had last year. Jonathan Brooks at running. Jonathan Brooks at running back out of Texas. I love adding him with the Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders backfield. It's another level of dynamic. I think by midseason, he's going to be getting the bulk of the touches. I think he's going to be explosive and awesome. I just think that as a whole, they added so much more to help Bryce Young. And I think we're. I don't think Bryce Young was as bad as we saw last year. The problem is he's so limited tools wise. Like he's not very big, not very fast, not the most strong arm. He's just good at playing quarterback. That's why he got drafted so high because he plays the position well. He just doesn't have the quote unquote X factors like you see with CJ Stroud size and arm strength, Josh Allen size, those little things that put make good guys great. I think Bryce Young just didn't doesn't necessarily have those. So it things have to be firing it on P's and Q's. Like well, people the game managers that we like, if you will. That's where I think his best peak is. If he could play like Brock Purdy esque, where he's just slinging an addition basically, or the best of Alex Smith. And I think they gave him the tools to do that. So offensively, I think they're going to be very, very good this year. The problem is they're going to give up 27 points a game. I think the games they win will be ones where they somehow only give up 24 and they score 26. I think in this division, that's going to lend to a nice seven and a 10 ish record. I think they'll be vastly improved. They'll be one of those teams that, and they have a pretty easy start to the schedule. I mean, you get the Chargers having to go across the country to visit you at home with Justin Herbert at best playing his first action coming off that foot injury since he's going to miss the preseason and might even miss week one. Like that's they have some and they have some early division games. I think they have a chance to get started. Good. So I'm going to go Carolina, a quote unquote surprise at seven and ten. Hmm. 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 I'm trying to think how I want to word this. Uh, kind, I think, is the way I'm going to go with that to the the Panthers after last year. However, I don't think you're wrong. I do think they're going to have a resurgence potentially. I just don't know if it's 7 and 10 good. Uh, well, I definitely didn't give them the Houston Texans turnaround, that's for sure. I'm not going that far now. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to be that good. Obviously, we're talking about Three games uh, is an improvement if we want to be technical. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you you hit five wins, you're, you're going to be looking pretty good. But I do look back at last year's schedule and some of these scores i mean they were in a lot of games uh, a lot of their games um obviously they did beat the texans um it's worth mentioning that but beyond that there were four or five games they're one score out of this so despite all of the bad harped on the the panthers last year that coin falls on the other side of the the you know of its face we have a seven win team last year how crazy would that be the panthers despite all the bad still won seven games last year that's that's how close this was and we've seen teams in the past win close games and have great records and then the next year fall off we've also seen yes yeah i didn't want to say names but we've also seen the flip side of that where teams lose a lot of close games and then the next season win all of those close games and go to the playoffs lions last year specifically <laughs> but, and i think the, like you said this could be their their defense is definitely much worse losing dante jackson brian burns etc but their offense is so much better that i think they'll be able to stay on cue so it's and i think yeah. coaching wise they got an upgrade i like frank reich but that offense was completely stale they ran four plays and everybody knew they were coming and, yeah, yeah yeah you kind of knew what was and it didn't help you were i mean they were losing people left and right it felt like on that team like it was offensive line one week it was running back it was bryce was beat up it was your receivers will adam Thielen even be out there we don't know who's your tight end gonna be this weekend i don't know and we all know quarterback's best friend tight end gotta have some out there uh their tackles just kind of like swinging doors at times I, there was a lot of issues there and then that defense was just <sighs> Injured, injured, injured. injured. Yeah, that was bad last year. I mean, you needed you needed more than just a Derrick Brown. He's big, but he's not that big. Like he's, he's you, a you pro needed, bowler, but he's not he's not Lawrence Taylor with plus three hundred. Like it's yeah. a, there's only so much he could do. But we and obviously I'm leaving out Brian Burns because he's not there anymore. 
exactly. So I think what they lost offensively, they gained offensively. So I, I basically have some of those close games just turning around this next year because Bryce Young's not going to be under siege. But that'll leave us now to who I have number one in the division. I have the Atlanta Falcons, but I don't exactly have them running away with it. I have them at a whopping eight and nine. So I don't. This isn't exactly a runaway division, or the, I have them at four and two in the division. I think they'll just be pretty good at beating the teams in their division and then taking a few elsewhere. I I don't think Kirk Cousins is necessarily like Pro Bowl Kirk Cousins. All for, I don't think he's going to transform this offense. It's going to light it up. I just think he's better than Desmond Ritter. That's really what that's a little, that's basically the plot too. Is he is better than Desmond Ritter, who was a bottom five quarterback last year, arguably, and better than Taylor Heineke, who was a bottom ten quarterback last year. It was slightly better. Honestly, if they didn't sign Kirk Cousins and just drafted Michael Penix, they'd probably be in this exact same spot. I like Michael Penix a lot. I hate what they did in that situation with both of them. If they would have just drafted like Roma Dunze, stood there and took Dallas Turner, just took something else there, I might have had them at nine and eight. Who knows? But honestly, that team was awesome last year. Bijan Robinson, while getting ignored by his head coach, was outstanding. Hey, by the way, a head coach that had – we're not going to spend too much time on this, but you could see in the play calling that he had to try and flex his smarts often. A second string tight end throwing a t- trying to throw a pass to your third string tight end while your number four overall pick tight end is blocking. Like that's just, and it's a tight end is not known for blocking. He's 215 pounds. He's there because he's six, four and runs a four, three. And you have him blocking. I, whatever Drake London, who could go games without targets. It felt like I guarantee you that will not happen this year. I guarantee he will get a minimum one target a game. A six foot five guy who's good at dunking on people, Michael Penix or Kirk Cousins, will eventually just say, London Bridge is falling down and chuck it up to him. They will find a way to get in the ball. Same with Kyle Pitts. Rondell Moore on 4 2. They, what looks to be a season ending injury today, card taken off the field and like one of those leg cast things. So that's an unfortunate miss they're going to have there. Darnell Mooney's an awesome number two. Offensive line, they were good last year. Defensively, they were good. Jesse Bates is a top three safety in the game. AJ Terrell's a top five corner still, in my opinion, if not top 10. They're still pretty good defensively. Last year, they just need a competent quarterback play and not Arthur Smith, the head coach. This year, they have the epitome of competent in Kirk Cousins or Michael Penix, who could be electric just the way he chucks the ball down the field. And I like Raheem Morris and Cohen as the offense coordinator coming from the Rams system, which means if they do some of the things that we saw with Todd Gurley, some of the things we saw last year with Kyron Williams, Bijan Robinson, top five pick in fantasy again. And Drake London, eight touchdowns plus. Probably a receiver too. I don't know if I'd take him receiver one because I have to see it first. But still, there's a lot to like here. But at the same time, eight and nine for the Falcons is still they're gonna they're gonna be the best of the NFC South bunch. They're this year's Buccaneers, basically. They're gonna survive their way to the top. Yeah, I mean, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm glad we didn't spend much time on on the previous coach there because, yeah, that was we'll bad. I, I'm sitting here giggling on the on the uh, uh, when I when you were talking about it just because like like it was so bad. It was a joke. It felt like a giant meme. Um, there was no way that was real, right? Like nobody, this is, this is what happens when you give your kid a coach for a year job, like, and your kid is seven and he's playing with crayons and he's writing on the raw wall. Like that's what Arthur Smith was. And, and no offense to kids that are writing on the wall with the crayons because hmm. most of you are smarter than Arthur Smith. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it felt like a guy trying to prove himself and not in the good way. Like this is what happens when you just luck into a job, sometimes you don't understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to make too big of a name for yourself. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, it was, this is what you have all the pieces. You have all the pieces. If you're the Falcons, now you just got to actually cohesively put them together. And I think bringing in a defensive minded head coach is a smart way to go here. Cause you need work on that defense, but there's good pieces and your offense led by Kirk will be just fine or led by Penix will be just fine. If you guys don't know our opinion on this podcast about Michael Penix, please awesome. go back and listen to our draft conversation about Michael Penix. And short story is highest floor, probably lowest ceiling of the guys in the NFL as quarter. No, you're not lowest ceiling, but definitely highest floor of all of the quarterbacks being drafted this year. In my opinion, at least um, where he's coming in and he can start. If Kirk isn't, isn't ready to go week one. It'll be just fine. So, yeah, Falcons 8-9, not out of the realm of possibility. I feel like his biggest weaknesses are very beneficiary to Drake London, where whenever he's under pressure, he has a bad tendency to just chuck it up 
two ways. Number one, he was the good guy this season, which oh, worked. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! How Drake sad you're going to throw it to Drake throwing, London instead of replacing with the quick pass against the Blitz. He sometimes says, "Nah, screw it. Let's put it out there somewhere." Sometimes we're better. Sometimes we're worse. Sometimes yeah. so is the offense off track. Sometimes Roma Dunze destroys everybody. Maybe Drake London could do that. I will say too, you kind of see what happens when, as it when your offense coordinator job that gets you a head coaching job is based off Derrick Henry rushing for two thousand yards and then throwing a play action dig to AJ Brown. Great strategy, very simple, and it works. Problem is when you don't have those two pieces. Well, we saw what happened necessarily. But or the or the nine here. down the sideline on a play accident, Derrick Henry. Yeah. All right. Well, we said we won't spend any more time on that. So I'll go ahead and quickly recap my NFC South predictions. At number four, I have the Saints at six and eleven. Tampa Bay also at six and eleven at the number three spot. Very competitive, even though they're sitting at the bottom there. Panthers with a resurgent year now at seven and ten, resurgent quote unquote. And then the Falcons, I will have taking the division at a whopping eight and nine. So Kelsey, that's my NFC South predictions. And the good news is you got a little something different. I have a whole lot of something different. I should say maybe not a whole lot, but it's definitely different. different. There's a lot of similarities you will see soon. <laughs> yeah, very, very close. Uh, but yeah, so with my NFC South, I guess we're going to start and rip the Band-Aid right off here with number four. I'm going with a team you call Resurgent, where for you was seven wins. For me is they're Resurgent at five wins. The Carolina Panthers, five and 12, bringing up the rear of this division. It's an improvement. That's all I'm asking from this team is a small improvement because there are a lot of holes. You can't lose as much as you do. And I don't mean like in game. I mean, in personnel wise, you can't lose that much and expect a first year quarter or coach to come in. Who's only been in OC within your own division and succeed because there's a mindset within the NFC South, which is kind of just survive and move on. And that's so be it. But is that for success? Is that meant for success? Probably not. Canales should be fine in the long run. But I think year one, he's going to be asked a whole lot of questions that he's not going to have a whole lot of answers for. And that's fine because right now, your job is to keep Bryce Young healthy and get them moving on. And five wins shows you're moving in the right direction. You're a three-win improvement over last year. Uh, But (laughs) there's obviously room. And we talked about this with the Jets. We talked about this with the Lions. We've talked about this with a lot of teams in the past. Through two or three drafts, they now have the assets now coming forward. Through the next two drafts will dictate the future of the Panthers. This team right here will not necessarily dictate this. And I'm sorry, if you finish 5-12, and 12, that's not the death sentence because you're going to be picking probably somewhere between 5 and 15. Closer to 5. Maybe even lower. But nonetheless, you have opportunities to get great players to fill in the holes that you have, and you don't necessarily need to spend a bunch of money. Granted, they do have money, so they can do it. But they have had a lot of good pieces. That trio in the backfield is going to be very, very interesting to see, uh, especially since only one of them I would consider an every down back. And people are going to be like, what do you mean every down back? Miles Sanders is there. Nah, not, not an every down back. That dude is a receiving back. He is a third down, short, like get the first down type of back. Has never been and will never be three downs in a cloud of dust. He will never be that guy. Jonathan Brooks, though, that dude is an every down back. Give that guy an opportunity, despite his speed. Give that guy an opportunity to explode on the on the scene, and I think we're going to have a very impressive thing to watch there in Carolina. And I love Chuba Hubbard. I absolutely think he is a fantastic piece as a change of pace back or just lock you down up the middle. He's not the guy that's going to be the explosive guy in this backfield anymore, and that's okay because I don't think he succeeds the best there in that situation. But I think as a short yardage, just get the first down guy, perfect fit for this this Panthers offense. Uh, that's that defense on the other hand, though, <laughs> I'm I'm throwing baseballs at that and not missing at the holes that they're leaving leaving behind them. Uh, it's it's bad. Uh, it just needs to be fixed. That's a lot of work, and that's what you need to focus on going forward. Um, there's going to be some free agents. There's some free agents currently available, uh, but you know, I digress. Uh, so yeah, Panthers five and twelve, bring out the bottom of the division, but they're not far behind the rest of the division. I will add to it. I also forgot to mention they did lose Jeremy Chin, which is another hole in that defense. And I do like Jonathan Brooks a lot. I actually liken him a lot to Arian Foster, which is where I think is a yep. very good fit with that. Can do a little bit of everything, the outside zones, the cupbacks, pre-vegan area, Foster, that is. The ability to run with power, with speed, with the loose. So, honestly, like you said, too, 
if there was betting odds, I would take it. I will bet that they will not be the worst team in football this year. That no, I will yeah, hear, I easily will not. That. Not even I won't see. I'll say they won't even be the worst team in the NFC this year. I can like, if there were betting odds for that, they don't have them, but I would gladly take those. If someone else wants to bet me ten dollars in the comments, let me know. I like we'll go, we'll do it. I'll have to double check my rankings, but I think you're right. I don't think they're the worst <laughs> team in the NFC either. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so for me, Panthers five and twelve. I, I don't I think we've harped on the Panthers enough. So let's go to another fun team to harp on, right? Uh, DJ, who do you have finishing top of your division again? Well, I had the Atlanta Falcons survive. Survive. You're right. Survive in advance, right? Well, coming in at five and twelve, I have the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, you're playing copycat. I have them. I have them doggy paddling. You have them playing copycat. But one hundred percent. Look, I think this team is is very good, but I don't know if they're there yet. Again, this offense will be fine if their blocking can hold up. And everybody's like, oh, but they have pe-. No, they don't in the offensive line. They need pieces in their offensive line. They have a piece in their offensive line. They do not have four extra pieces to their offensive line, though. Uh, the reason Arthur Smith tend to have Kyle Pitts in the block is because you needed six and seven guys to block because your offensive line was not great. The run game, you got to get it going. You got to use Bijan. Obviously, new regime in here. So, sorry, Arthur. I don't mean to keep picking on you here, but... No, it's okay. We got to do what we got to do here. We got to have that conversation. It has to be had. Um, yeah, Cal Pitts, Bijan, those are your two targets that you need to get going in this new offense. Drake London, I need to see you. Uh, I do wish Rondell Moore had not gotten carted off. I hope it's not serious because I think for what the Falcons do or are going to do and what both Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix do well, I think Rondell Moore would have been a perfect fit in that team i think when he comes back if he's healthy and able to play at full full potential what we know he can do this dude is built to be a 1b option 1c option at the receiver position um and don't be surprised if we see kyle pitts line up in a slot and yeah, run we'll be doing that so i look and, and run little short outs and and quick routes that get him open because he's gonna be matched up against a linebacker who has no match in athleticism for him because there's three linebackers I can think of, and one of them plays for his own team that can even match up athletically to the to Kyle Pitts. Um, so yeah, I, I think this Falcons team five and twelve, and I feel like I'm being mean, but at the same time they have a tough road, a tough schedule here, and, and it's not going to be easy. I do have them going three and three in the division, so I'm not completely beating up on them. That's why they're ahead of the Panthers. They go three and three. Panthers go two and four, but. <clears throat> Against the rest of the league, I don't know if they're there yet. In the NFC South, five and twelve, you're still in this ball game, guys. Like that's all I gotta say about it. So, yeah, DJ Falcons five and twelve. What do you think? It's tough because I think they could very easily be a lot better, but they can be just like you said. They could be five and twelve if things don't click. There's a lot of moving parts here, which is what makes them very yeah. interesting. And I want to know if that quarterback conundrum comes back to haunt them, or if they end up being smarter than we think. That's where I'm curious how it's going to play out because if they took J.J. McCarthy, none of us are having this conversation. You took the oh. young guy that with room to develop, that's perfect. You took the second oldest guy who was basically is ready to go now with injury concerns with a quarterback who's old coming off an injury. It was yep. a very weird conundrum how they did, and a guy who just gave $160 million to. So <laughs> yeah. like, who it, it, has see, half of that in Cole's cash. Look up in their face and they're 5-12. and 12, I see every scenario where they just, where they survive and survive and conquer. And by conquer, I mean survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that is kind of the theme of this NFC South. I will say, um, I so Jesse Bates, though, but as long as he's yeah. there, I will pencil them in at minimum four wins as long as he's there every time. Jesse Bates comes down with at least five interceptions this year. Book Top it. three safety in the game, and it's not number three. Yeah, no, honestly, as far as on a team right now, it might not even be number two. Um, but yeah, I digress. Anyways, uh, somebody signed Justin Simmons. <laughs> I'm going to stand by that. Uh, all right, now moving on to my number two team. And again, just another team we continue to pick on. But I picked on them a little less. A little less. Uh, coming in at 5-12 and 12 at number 2 in the division, the New Orleans Saints. Are you guys sensing a theme here? Uh, I don't have a lot of hope for wins coming from this division. But you know what? The Saints come in 3-3 three and three in the division. But they beat the Falcons head-to-head. That's how they <laughs> get this tiebreaker. <sighs> Say what you will about... Everything else, the most one of the more fun rivalries that doesn't really mean a lot of things in the NFL's grand ecosphere is the Falcons and Saints. It doesn't make sense considering 
distance and location until you've lived it and you've experienced it and you've experienced both sides of this. It is one of the most fun and entertaining rivalries I've ever seen from an NFL standpoint. That doesn't mean anything. It's not the Eagles and Cowboys. It's not the Niners and Cowboys. It's not the Packers and Lions or Packers and Vikings or insert NFC North team here or AFC North team here. This is just fun. This is literally, guys, we care about college, but you know what? We're going to have two good good games a year, and they're going to be against each other, and that's just what we're going to do. Um, yeah, so 5-12 and 12 against for the Saints. Everything we talked about, if you didn't hear what, we, what DJ and I talked about for his Saints pick, just rewind this a little bit and you'll hear it. I don't think I need to say anything more because really at the end of the day, the Saints are old. They need to get young. You have far too much money tied up in 35-plus-year-olds, or we'll even say 32-plus-year-olds. It can't happen. You can't succeed in today's NFL. You've played enough gymnastics with your salary cap for years that now you're going to be super penalized to starting next year with, what is it, $80 million un- over the salary cap next season? Something ridiculous like that, it's, yeah. It's insane. So, Saints, got to get younger, got to figure it out. Got to use your weapons. Please, somebody give Jamal Williams the ball inside of the t- the red zone. That's all I ask. Just give him the ball and block. <laughs> Just, that's all I need to see, man. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, they're gonna be they're gonna have the most anime loving fan or loving players on their team, and so they get a little bit extra cred in my book, uh, which is why they're second and not third or fourth in this division. Not that I really intentionally did this, but it just worked out this way. Fun coincidence. Uh, so yeah, five and twelve yet again, DJ. I can't wait to see the division winning Buccaneers at five and twelve. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint. We'll go ahead and rip the bandaid off without even stalling for it right here. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers win the division with eight and nine record. Sound familiar? That's right. DJ had his division winner here in the NFC South at an eight and nine record. Again, there's a theme here. Not a lot of wins coming from the NFC South outside of the division. Four and two are the Buccaneers in the division. That's what I have, Matt. They've proven themselves to be the king of this division by happenstance and surviving. I don't think there's a better quarterback as far as the definition of surviving goes than Blake, uh, Baker Mayfield right now. And Mike Evans, dude's just going to do what he does. If you didn't hear what we talked about with him previously, just rewind this episode a little bit, listen to DJ's pick, and then fast forward to the rest of this. Uh, but yeah, it's, look, the Buccaneers, they have to make up for Carlton Davis. They have to make up that defensive line. You got to, yeah. there's been too many injuries, too many not performing players to say that this team is ready to go defensively. But at the same time, Antoine Woodfield, Jamel, Jamel Dean, you got pieces. You just got to make them work. Um, I do look at this running back core, though, and I ask questions. I just I just have to ask them, can White do what he needs to do as a running back to succeed? Um, if you didn't hear DJ's pick on him where he ranks in his running back fantasy look for a PPR league, go back and listen to that because we talk about this. From a PPR standpoint, he will get touches. Can this team help him turn those touches into production? And I do mean this team because this offensive line needs to figure it out. Tristan Wirfs, yes, congratulations getting paid. Now prove it. Like that's that's where we're at now. Now you have to go back and prove it. You don't have Tom Brady back there anymore. Now you have to prove it for Baker. And Baker loves him. Everybody loves Tristan Wirfs. I love Tristan Wirfs. But at the same time, <laughs> we got to stay healthy. We got to stay on the field. We got to block for our quarterback. So those are the questions. Uh, and then on top of that, can you get Rashad White into the end zone? We'll see. Uh, Look, Mike Evans is going to do what he does, but can everybody else step up around him? I don't know yet that answer, but I think it's going to be better than everybody else until proven otherwise here because if it ain't broke, don't fix it in the South, it looks like. Can't believe that I'm saying this because I didn't think I'd be saying it at this time last year, but I do think that uh, Baker Mayfield might be the best quarterback in the division as of right now. <laughs> like, I think it's, oh, I'm sorry. At this point, it's kind of hard to argue otherwise at this point. I mean, just Kirk's coming in broken. Derek Carr had a rough last couple of years. Bryce Young, well, we saw what happened last year, unfortunately. We, until we have evidence to the contrary, as of right now, you can make the case Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback in the division. So picking Tampa to win it. And he has arguably the best receiver in the division, too. So it's like, well, there things are kind of like, arguably the best offensive lineman with Tristan worse in the entire division as well. Like, all signs are really pointing into their favor. So it's not outrageous for them to be up here as well. Like, I... I said, I had them two games out of the spot. Six and 11 looks terrible. Then you look at the top and it was eight and nine. So it's not like I had them plummeting. It's just, 
I think this division's going to stink again, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, you got to get, you got to wait out of the division it, to succeed in this division beyond just your own division. Like you got to mm-hmm. figure it out. That's how you're going to get to the playoffs. That's how you're going to win. But the Buccaneers have proven if you just get to the playoffs, anything can happen. So we'll see what they can do. Uh, but just to recap everything from my list, once again, uh, we have from the bottom up the Panthers five and twelve coming up with an improvement, uh, but a very small improvement. The Falcons also five and twelve, uh, winning just based off division record at three and three. The Saints five and twelve, beating the Falcons on head to head division record, and then the Buccaneers winning the division at eight and nine for this one. So, yeah, that's my NFC South guys. And before we get into the AFC South, we got one very nice quick message for you right here we do also have to bring it back from last year you oh, guys remember we right. brought back the fan votes as well too where we have an anonymous fan go in and chip in their divisions to compare to us so we'll run through their nfc south really quickly they have the saints at the bottom like i do at five and twelve the panthers copying me at seven and ten atlanta at nine and eight and with kelsey with tampa winning the division at nine and eight so two of the teams in the same spot as us the other two maybe not so much and the yeah. records maybe not so much either I, look, hey, it's it's positive, but you know what? Uh, shout out to, her, to to the fan vote there. Um, I'm bolder than I am, um, mm-hmm. which is saying something. Who knows? 